Hello, everyone. Thank you for connecting. Let's uh, pray and get started with our uh, session here uh, where we're talking about the book of Hebrews. So would uh, one of us like to lead in prayer before we, we start uh, with chap the last part of chapter 10? Maybe Rosalind? Rosalind, are you able to pray? Yeah, let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Daddy, for this class that we are going to have. We pray, Father God, to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand what we are now going to study. Lord, I pray to anoint our dear pastor as she will be teaching the word, Father God, and help us, Father God, to live for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. We were at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where we were saying that we must encourage one another. And uh, recently we are seeing it, uh, a sort of a practice or a trend where people don't want to go to church and they want to remain a believer by themselves. Uh, but then the Bible encourages us that fellowship is important, the assembling together of saints is important, and that you know, there is a significance to that. And so we should not forsake the coming together of believers. And uh, particularly as we draw closer to the second coming of our Lord Jesus, it's going to become uh, quite, quite um, relevant and important for us to keep meeting together. Okay, let's pick up from verse 26. Uh, it's quite a long passage there. We'll read from verse 26 and uh, go on till verse 39. Can somebody please read that? Verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses, of which much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? Should I continue? It's it's fine, uh, Rosalind. Let me explain this much, and then maybe we yeah, can read the remaining. Thank you. So here we are. Um, looking at the context becoming something like what we saw in Hebrews 6, where somebody who has experienced God strongly falls away from God, then it becomes impossible for such a person to come back to him. Um, and, and so there is this, this emphasis on um, a person who is sinning willfully. Okay, Sinning willfully is what we know that our life is not aligned to God because of our dis disobedience and we continue in that willfully we are doing things that are not pleasing to god then uh, what happens it says there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins because it's it's not that the the blood of jesus is has lost its power or the sacrifice of christ is no longer perfect that a person cannot receive from what we said earlier, Hebrews 7.25, we said, right, that he saves to the uttermost. So even if a person commits many sins, it can be forgiven. It comes under the cover of, uh, you know, the, the work of cleansing work of uh, the blood of the Lamb. But here, the point is willfully willfully that also shows us that a believer is not wanting to grow in the lord but what are they doing they're just trying to take advantage of the finished work of the cross which is so wrong and there is a warning for believers to not treat the uh, work of jesus lightly or uh, be ungrateful 
for about it or um, uh, you know be like how how do you put it it's a very careless attitude where we say yeah we have all the benefits of the cross we have all the blessings of the covenant and we'll just live our lives however we, we want because we already have it right positionally i've already been made righteous but our lifestyle or the living out as a a, a child of god as that person in christ jesus that's not aligning to the word of god we are only depending on uh, you know that that positional uh, truth that we understand and we are saying we can keep sinning but the our position in christ doesn't change no we can keep sinning and the blood of jesus still cleanses us right so taking advantage in a way of what christ has done and that is a very disrespectful dishonoring way of uh, living our lives and that is what we are being warned about so sin willfully that's one thing there and uh, he says in verse 27 fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries so we can expect when we are living without honor and reverence unto the lord there's going to be a judgment okay and then he points to moses and his law and he says there that uh, if people reject it whenever people rejected the law of moses uh, confirmed by two or three witnesses they experienced the consequences of that right so how much more we who are now living in grace and uh, we've already seen jesus much greater than moses the new covenant much better than the old covenant so when god has god has brought us into the fulfillment from the shadows and now we are saying that yeah we can live however we want and nothing will happen to us because we are covered by the grace of god that's a very dangerous thing so dangerous verse 29 he says of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot so it's not that literally we speak blasphemy or we deny christ with our words or you know we do something obvious like that maybe we are not but with our lifestyle with uh, the willful sinning with with disobedience with dishonor it is it is like trampling the son of god underfoot okay uh, and that's that's so sad we are saying we are believers but everything else is not matching up to the glory of god to the honor of god and our lives are so far away from what it should be like isn't it so he's he's uh, then reminding us that when a believer goes to this extreme extent it's like trampling the son of god underfoot we would never think of doing something like that isn't it how could we our whole life is is a result of what he has done for us and his love for us is what has given us like we can never think of trampling him underfoot but you see our sinful lifestyle is like that as if we are trampling him underfoot and he says counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing just uh being irreverent yeah the blood will cleanse i'll keep living my life no, i'll keep committing my sins so it's very irreverent of the believer it's like counting the blood as a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace wow it's it's quite very strong words trampling underfoot uh counting the blood a common thing insulting the spirit of grace can keep saying yeah grace grace i'm living under grace okay but never forget a life of grace should also have truth in it because that's what we see isn't it in in uh, john chapter 1 uh, i think it's verse 14 where we we see that the lord jesus was full of grace and truth so it's a it's a healthy combination of the grace of god and truth we should not uh, abuse the grace of god that's the point okay now let us read from verse 30 to verse 39 verse 30 for yes. we know him who said vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord and again the lord will judge his people 
it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were treated, for you had compassion on me in my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Uh, you've been reading long passages. Uh, you know, God bless you for that. We saw how uh, the author is telling the believers not to be discouraged and to go to the extent where uh, they are letting go of their faith, uh, they are falling away, or you know they are um, dishonoring the work of Jesus on the cross. Instead, from verse thirty, you see he's he's uh, encouraging them and he's saying that you know uh, don't let go no matter what you're going through. And he's reminding them that we have a God who will help us. We have a God who will um, reward us for the faith that we have. And uh, also remember that God is a God of vengeance. So when we do the wrong thing, then of course there will be consequences. And uh, scriptures also tell us that the Lord will judge his people. So keep that fear of God in your mind uh, before you let go of him or before you uh, given to a sinful lifestyle due to discouragement. And verse 31, uh, it says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh, so we don't want to be in a position with God where God is angry with us or, you know, uh, God is uh, judging us and uh, we are no longer under the, the cover of the work of the cross that's so scary isn't it like we cannot face the wrath of god that's why jesus came he hid us he covered us he bought us now if we are exposing ourselves uh, outside of the work of the cross it's so dangerous it's so scary that's why he's saying it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god if he were to judge us just on account of our sins uh, uh, it, it's terrible to think of you know what lies ahead of us that kind of a judgment and uh, i know that sermons have been preached on this theme right like it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god by some famous preachers in the past where they they used to uh, speak about heaven and hell and uh, charge the people to make a decision for salvation so um, I, I know that nowadays uh, a lot of us don't preach like that fire and brimstone, hell, uh, hellfire. Uh, but yeah, we we emphasize um, uh, the fact that you know the Lord Jesus has has come because of His love, and uh, when we accept His salvation, we can walk in His blessings. Uh, we are changed, transformed, and if we neglect. Okay, here is also another reality that we must bring out, which says that there is a very um, a dire consequence to that in this life as well as the life ahead uh, and then you know he goes on encouraging the believers we see some portions there where he's telling them how faithful they were how in the early days through their struggles of persecution they endured now when we uh, look at the bible and what jesus has done god protected us from sicknesses okay but when it comes to persecution and opposition even Jesus had to face it. There was no way out. There were times when he encountered opposition uh, and he overcame. He went ahead with the mandate that God gave him. So this just shows us that it is going to happen. They who persecuted Christ, we are 
but his disciples, will they not? Jesus said that even you will face persecution. So he did not prevent uh, or he did not uh, assure us that there will be no opposition. That is something that, that we see in scripture. He never uh, said that, okay, I've covered you. You will never have persecution. You will never have people opposing you for your faith. That is something that we may encounter from time to time. But we have to be strong through those difficulties. The these believers seem to have been strong in the early days. So he's just reminding them and he's saying that, uh, uh, come on, you've done it earlier. You were strong. You were hospitable to others. You were kind. Continue with the same confidence. We have such an assurance from God that he will reward us. When we don't throw away our confidence, verse 35 is so beautiful. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. In our lives as believers, will there be moments where we will be so uh, challenged, maybe so tired, maybe so discouraged, maybe you know, so put any other situation in it that we come to a place where we want to give up? Yes, it could happen, but we are being reminded, don't let go. No matter what, don't cast away your confidence, which has a great reward okay till the finish line finishing strong that's what god wants with from us reaching 90 percent of the uh, uh you know the the track almost i almost made it almost is not good enough make it to the finish line that's what god wants from all of us make it to the finish line now jesus he said it is finished all of us should be able to say it is finished nothing uh, that we encounter or face should bring us to a place where we are saying, okay, enough, you know, I give up. I ran a good race so far and now I'm letting go. So never do that. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. So when we hold on by faith, we will receive the reward of that. Uh, and then, you know, he uh, reminds them that they need endurance. What is endurance? You know, endurance is a capacity where we bear up under pressure. When there's no pressure, it's okay. That's why when we talk about weightlifting and all, we say, oh, endurance exercises. Because there, there are some weights that are putting some pressure on us. And it's not the most comfortable thing with the pain and with, uh, you know, the discomfort. We are still doing it because there are benefits of bearing those weights. In the same way, in life, there will be circumstances that have pressure on us while we're living for God and we are wanting to live for God. But in those moments, we need some endurance. Don't just let it go because it's heavy. Don't just let it go because you feel some discomfort. Keep going. That's endurance, to keep bearing up under pressure so that, you know, when we have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So now he is, is going to start talking very quickly about examples of people who did not let go of the faith. They made it to the finish line. It's all about getting to the finish line. And he's saying uh, there will be phases of the race where under pressure, we may want to give up. Firstly, don't cast away your confidence. Secondly, endure, endure. Come on, keep going. Even in the midst of that, pressure. Because what is going to happen? You'll have the reward. You'll have the promise. And there are people who have done that, who have received the reward. So uh, he just uh, a reminder again in verses 37 to 39, where he says, for yet a little while, for he who is coming will come and will not tarry. That just states the real assurance that we have uh, about, you know, when we seek Christ, we know the fulfillment of uh, uh, everything that we are hoping in God for will take place, right? E even in terms of uh, this body being transformed, many things are going to happen at the culmination of, of things. And we are putting our faith in it. We are putting our hope in it. He's saying it's the real deal. It is going to happen. Jesus is going to come back. And, uh, you know, we, we will... Uh, walk into the fullness of everything. Uh, and he says, uh, now 
the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in him so just a reminder stay in faith don't give up because god is not happy when we give up verse 39 but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul you know it's like uh, a parent or a teacher correcting a young child where they say that uh, uh, you know, we should be hardworking, uh, but you're already hardworking. <laughs> so they don't want to discourage the child. So they, they kind of affirm the child also and say that, okay, come on, you are doing it. And I'm sure you will make it. So with the heart of compassion, he is encouraging the believers not to give up. So let's just pause for a moment. We'll move into uh, Hebrews 11, which is a very famous passage that talks about faith. But uh, let's pause for a moment, answer some questions, and uh, maybe also have a little bit of discussion, and then we can do uh, Hebrews 11. So here in the chat, it says, when, when it says, the Lord will judge his people, what kind of judgment it talks about? OK, the Lord will judge his people. Um, so we know that. When it says uh, we will be judged, there are different judgments, right? Like ultimately there's that uh, white throne judgment and uh, there is something known as the rewards, right? That will happen in the uh, after the secret coming of Jesus in heaven for the life that we've lived for Christ, um, rewards will be given to the believers. So that is also uh, something we can take into account. But when we say judgment, ultimately as believers, we know that we are going to be judged by the uh, work of Jesus. Heaven and hell, separating of uh, those who don't come under the work of the cross and those who come under the work of the cross. So we will be judged into like the blessings and you know God's eternal presence. Yeah, that's broadly what it is. But I think in eschatology, pastor teaches quite elaborately on the on the different judgments. Is that okay, Rafina? Fine. Any other questions? Or have you ever had any uh, circumstance or situation where you endured? Okay, and you can you can share something that's not too sensitive, uh, that you're comfortable to share with others. But any anything that we've all, I'm sure we've all been through something where we felt like, oh, I can't take it. Uh, but when we held on, we did not cast away our confidence, right? Uh, we saw God's reward or His promise. Would anyone like to share? How about our brothers from Africa? <laughs> I missed that question. OK. No, Lubega, I'm saying, uh, have any of you had any experience where you have endured and, uh, you know, because you didn't give up, you're blessed? Um, I'll just share. Okay, sure, sure. Incidents that happened in my life. Uh, so, my mom and my dad they were working in different places for uh, quite a long time, uh, uh, like almost fifteen years. And dad used to come on the weekends. And uh, uh, growing up, I think uh, we used to pray. <laughs> every every week when he comes and my mom used to say there were times uh, like people used to say it's enough uh, either you move back or decide something because we were all grown up and uh, I was I was almost 13 so many years has passed away and uh, we thought we thought that's how life is gonna be like forever like that will come on your weekends but uh, I always wanted my dad uh, to be at home uh, I think it's it's nice to stay together and uh, and 
when we were thinking like that uh, the posting for him to come became much more harder there were exams interviews and all this coming up and then my dad wrote first time the exam finally he won he started writing exams at a point and he failed <laughs> the second time he failed and then the third time uh, he wrote again and he actually failed but the government changed the rules and somehow he passed and uh, and i don't know like we know he failed and he was preparing for the fourth time but in between the process uh, he actually passed and then uh, even after he passed they said the posting is going to be very very hard and uh, my my grandma fell sick we did angio for her we were all focusing on that and that's when my dad got a job so we uh, and like when first of all is it really happening is it i was i was thinking maybe okay okay he got a job okay that's it maybe he's is going to be less far away but then mom said no no he's coming and i think i was very like i was in my teenage and i was able to i'm not a kid like oh not just enjoy but i was able to catch the emotions of what's happening and life has uh, totally uh, changed upside down after he came and uh, like people said like it's it's never going to happen and i think even i came to a point where i kind of stopped praying <laughs> like uh, like something it, it was kind of an everyday prayer but sometimes you don't feel like it anymore like okay if, if god wants if god wills let it happen or it's fine and uh, recently i think last year he was transferred back to the place again and again it was like uh, again a challenge and uh, I even thought of not coming on campus. I thought I'll stay back at home, and then. But I think that experience built us up. Like after fifteen years, he came back. My mom said, "My mom said this one thing: like before you come back, Dad would have got a transfer." And when I went, uh, like when I went back, he got a transfer. So I think that that kind of builds our faith. Uh, and the second time when it happened, we were all so strong. We were all like, uh, even again the. but there were always struggles always people saying it's not going to happen uh, the people whom we think they will encourage they will be the one to say the first one like it's all going to happen just give up for it thank you jafina thank you for sharing uh, i think it's quite a personal story but you were uh, uh, generous enough to share it with us uh, and it is building our faith it's not easy you know 15 years we are just hearing it in a couple of minutes but what all of you may have gone through to trust god uh, in those difficult moments is uh, only you know uh, but you know thank god you didn't give up on your faith and it's about receiving the promise that god gave you about your dad's transfer back to uh, your own city and so that he can stay with you so it's a good example right it's a good example and i i just wanted us to think because i i know that all of us go through some of the other periods of uh, discouragement struggles when we are waiting on the promises of god so want to keep it very uh, practical uh, how about we we take time to maybe listen to one or two more testimonies and maybe we'll wrap it up with that today and then we will start off with hebrews 11 in the next class so please feel free to share if uh, you have held on and received the promise of god in any situation I'll share about a couple um, in our yeah uh, sure the church in Kerala. Um, so they were very close to us personally, and they uh, they were not having children for seventeen um, years even after marriage, and they held on to that promise. And they tried all possible medical ways. They tried IVF. They tried all possible ways, and uh, still it was very difficult for them to conceive. And after that. Uh, like after 17 years of marriage god blessed them with a child and we were able to witness that and it's so amazing to see the child now she is around 5 uh, and it's so wonderful to see the power of god yeah praise god 
praise god thank you so much uh, uh, john it is amazing 17 years is a long time to trust god right almost like the abraham story 25 years uh, but yeah today we stand with the testimony and we glorify god for that thank you for sharing uh, anyone else please let's let's share some stories today some testimonies can i share of course of course zeli please go ahead it's kind of a bit personal but i want to share it for the glory of god um i grew up in a very dysfunctional family and um my dad was addicted to alcohol for more than 35 years like uh, growing up as a child and as a teenager i saw him battling with alcohol and uh, it really had a very negative impact on our life as a children and as a family as a whole so when i accepted jesus at the age of, at the age of 17 you know like uh, i started to pray for my dad and you know as a family my mom my brothers my sisters we used to get together we used to pray for him continually and at times we thought that he is not going to give up uh, the addiction at times we lose hope but you know the holy spirit is the one who encourages us and motivates us to keep on going and praying and also you know the church the uh, the church family you know apc kohima they were praying for my dad and you know like only uh, after his um, retirement from the government uh, uh you know service uh, god set him free and it's just such a miracle you know his counterpart his colleague whom he used to hang out and drink together almost all of them are dead but it's just a miracle that my dad is still alive and um you know like uh he had a stroke two times and he was admitted in the hospital two times and we thought that this two times also that you know all their relatives the love ones that uh, the uh, you know our neighbors they visited him uh, thinking that that would be his last day but it's just the hand of god uh, over his life that he survived to stroke and by the grace of god he's uh, he's uh, he's still alive and he's thriving in life so i want to praise god that wish uh, that uh, the years of prayers it was not a Um, you know, uh, it was a long journey for us. In all those seasons, God taught us to be patient, to wait on Him, and not to give up. So we want to thank God that uh, for His life and His set free from the addiction of alcohol. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Zeli. I know it's probably uh, so sensitive and uh, personal to you, and yet you shared. So uh, we appreciate that. And 35 years is not easy at all, right? And to see hope in the midst of what is going on day to day, and to now witness that uh, your prayers and your faith uh, has. seen the work of god being fulfilled in your dad's life is so amazing it's a very powerful testimony and uh, we thank and praise god for uh, uh, you know your dad's good health and his life in christ now and uh, yeah we'll continue to pray for you and your family thank you so much for sharing um, anyone else we we'll probably close with that anyone else also wants to share you can please share any stories of endurance because hebrews 11 is full of stories <laughs> lots and lots of stories so how about we start with ours first and then we will get into that oh 
okay children of god <laughs> have you have you received any promises by faith could be a, a simple one also so don't worry about that okay maybe I, i'll just share one quick thing uh, i think in my life one of the hardest um, phases was after my graduation when i was trying to get uh, a job because that was also a period when i was trying to decide where i must invest my energy uh, you know whether i want to go more into the clinical line or whether i want to go more into the research line or uh, you know be an entrepreneur so there were many options uh, and uh, so it was a real struggle real struggle and while you're struggling just trying to make those decisions to get a job to sustain yourself uh, and and you know at least it gives you some space where you can keep growing and then eventually you can make your decisions about your master's program and uh, other things uh, but i was not getting something suitable so it was the the hardest thing and apparently it happens to uh, a lot of uh, people who are in the medical line uh, so i graduated and then the the struggle was so real and there would be days i i got some jobs but i was not enjoying it so it was really painful every day to wake up and go uh, and wonder god why did i why did i choose this career and what is going to happen you know so i it it was really uh, such a difficult period uh, and i think it it ended up being a couple of years before i actually opted for my masters like i made up my mind what i want to study uh, but those years were the toughest where uh, every now and then i would think of okay come on just give up just do any job you know and just uh, survive uh, it doesn't matter anymore excellence doesn't matter so you go through so much and then you're wondering like lord do you even have a place for me uh, is anything even going to happen but today as i look back uh, just keeping faith in god is so powerful because uh, i've seen god open doors and lead me through a journey where uh, you know i i i can say that uh, god was there his power was there to make it all happen to you know pick the right masters program be able to study it uh, and then graduate from that and then find suitable jobs and eventually you know how god led me uh, into the ministry it's amazing amazing but those days if you would have asked me i would be sitting in front of the computer like this only researching and you know uh, i'd really feel like crying at the end of the day because the it felt like there's no hope and uh, that the break will never come but thank god you know the journey has happened and i i feel grateful to god for just being there with me and leading me in this area of of my life so just want to glorify god with that okay so yeah uh, let's uh, take time to thank god this morning uh, he's a god of breakthrough he's working in all of our lives and uh, in the next class we will go over the lives of people one by one and see how very similar to each of us they waited on god's promises made to them personally okay uh, and we learn lessons or we draw inspiration from their steadfastness in the lord so let's pray and close right now uh, and i just want to request uh, someone on the call to please pray maybe zeli zeli are you are you okay to pray before we wrap up yes let's pray Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for this wonderful session, Lord God. Whatever truth we have learned in these classes, Lord, help us, Lord, and remind us, Holy Spirit, so that our faith will be stronger in you, that no matter what the situation comes in our way, that we will not give up on our faith, but we will cling to you, we will lean on you, we will depend on you, Lord God. Help us, Holy Spirit, teach us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, as we depart from this. class may your holy spirit continue to guide us lead us teach us lord 
in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Stay strong in the Lord at all times.